everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Today is it, the last chapter in our Matthew read-along. Um, and Merry Christmas Eve to you as well. And I hope that not in addition to reading Matthew today and watching this video that you get some place to worship God someplace and celebrate the incarnation um, uh, with your faith community tonight as well. Uh, we are get joined by our final guest, and I'll ask my guest to introduce herself. Thank you. So I'm the Reverend Natasha Stewart. I am the rector of St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Situate, Massachusetts, so far away from you all. Um, but I've known Jason for 20 years. We just worked out. Um, we met uh, the very first day of seminary uh, in New York City at General Seminary. And he came to, up to me on the street and offered <laughs> to help me move in. And I didn't know this guy at all. And I thought, yeah, right. I'm not letting you steal all my stuff. <laughs> so I turned him down. <laughs> but it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. So. <laughs> I didn't remember you turning me down. I thought I, I thought I ended up. I, I think so I did people. in the end, like take you up on it after I saw you were on campus a little bit. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was so. That was sort of my thing because I had moved in early and I was like, I didn't have anything else to do, so I just helped people move in. So that seemed, and, and, which moving on to that campus was hard. So that seemed like a nice thing to do. So it was a very nice thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a name tag, I totally would have taken you up for it. <laughs> I should, have, I should have done it. I didn't even think that's about why that. you wear your name tags at church people. That's right. That's right, folks. That's right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, excellent. So Matthew 28. Last so chapter. Matthew 28. Yeah, the last chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Um, and I was super excited to get assigned this one because Easter is actually my favorite holiday. So um, to be it to reflect on Easter in the midst of Advent has been really wonderful for me. Um, so there's a couple things going on in this chapter, as I'm sure you've read. So one is this story of the women at the tomb and their experience. And then the other is the story of the guards. And they're kind of parallel stories going on. So I want to start first with the women at the tomb, because that's how the chapter begins. Um, and they go and they're going to continue their vigil vigil there um, rather than going to anoint the body. So they're in this gospel, they're expecting to go and just sit vigil and pray. Um, they're not expecting to be able to have access into the tomb um, because the big stone is there, the guards are there guarding it. They're not expecting to go in. So it's slightly different than the usual resurrection stories that we hear in the other gospels. Um, but they go and they get there and behold, the, um, the tomb is empty. And there's this great earthquake that comes and the guards are stunned and sort of, um, they say that they're like dead men, but they're not actually dead because we see them carry on in the next part of the story. So they're there and they're, um, the angel comes and tells them to not be afraid, but Jesus has risen and they need to go to Galilee and they need to tell the rest of the disciples about this. And so the women go off on their journey becoming sort of the first um, evangelists to head out and spread the good news of the resurrection. And along their way, they meet Jesus. He comes straight to them and he says, greetings. And they're so excited. They clasp his feet and he says, just keep going. Go tell everybody to meet me in Galilee where I, they know to, where to go. Um, and so they do. They continue on their way. And while the women are continuing on their way, this is where the story of the guards comes in now. Um, so we're a little further on into the chapter at this point, um, more around verse 11 of the chapter, we see the guards. And the women have traveled off and the guards then run back um, to the city and they tell the chief priests um, what's happened. They're like, um, the tomb is empty. He's clearly come back to life. Like nobody came and took him. We don't know what to do. And the authorities just tell them, we're going to give you some money and you're going to lie. You're going to tell them that in the middle of the night, the guard there, his disciples came and stole the body and they're making up the story that he resurrected because we don't want this getting around that he was really the Messiah. He really was the son of God. And this is going to satisfy um, 
the governor, if he hears what happens, because he really doesn't want this story out and his authority challenged. Um, and we'll we'll have your back. If you lie for us, we'll have your back. You won't get you won't get in trouble for sleeping on the job, <laughs> um, as they were told to say. So that's the story then that gets passed around um, Jerusalem is that while the guards were sleeping, Jesus was stolen. His body was stolen by the disciples. But in the meantime, the women have arrived and they've told the disciples, the 11 that are left now, right? Because Judas is gone, um, that they've seen the risen Christ, that he came with them and that he wants them all to go to Galilee, to the place where they know, um, to meet him. Um, and he'll come and be there with him. Now, this place is on a mountain. It is assumed to be the same mountain that the transfiguration took place on. So it's very significant to, to them um, as a place where they come to be close with God and to hear messages from God. But as we see in this chapter, it's a little different. Transfiguration, we've got all the building of booths and this beautiful sparkly Jesus that comes and all of that. But this time, Jesus just comes as, as he is to, him, to, um, to his friends. And it's the words that are more important than all the actions. It's the Great Commission. I send you out to baptize all of the nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and reminding them to go out and to push, to, to share this good news and to share the, um, the love of God that's been given um, to them. And that sort of echoes back to all of Matthew's point of everyone's included, the Gentiles, right? So pulling us back to Christmas, um, the very beginning of the birth story, we see all the Gentiles, kings from far away that come, wise men from far away that come, um, and the shepherds who are in the fields who probably weren't Jewish either. Um, all these people come to adore Jesus. And so here at the end of his life, he's saying again, I've come for everyone, for everyone, not just for those who are in the inner circle. Um, so we really see this sort of two different parallel stories going on. And out of that, I sort of take that it's, there's very different belief going on. You can believe in the empty tomb because that's what the guards have told everybody. The tomb is empty, but it's different to believe in the resurrection, the actual risen Christ, um, and to share that, to share that message. And we see that very much the difference um, in the women and the, and the guards' stories of the way that the language is used around how they tell their stories. The women um, are very um, present and it's an ongoing. They go and tell the disciples. It's very like ongoing kind of work that they're doing. Whereas the guards went and told. It's a past tense thing. It's a thing that happened and it's done and they're not gonna kind of keep doing it. It's kind of the way that it's sort of worded. So um, it sort of helps us think about which side, the empty tomb that they went and told about or is it the resurrection that they're going and telling about? So that's kind of my overview. Is that good enough? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's fantastic. I've never picked up on the, the tense of the verbs before um like that but i think that's that's really significant um and like that in the fact that we end with the with the commission right, right. so it, it's it's incomplete action it's ongoing action and the verbs reflect that uh, whereas the story of the empty tomb told by the guards uh, was true but false and so it ends right mm -hmm. and 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 then the the story of the resurrection is incre is incredible right but it's true <laughs> and so <laughs> it, it, it carries on and so and it's carried on by the this ongoing action of ours of telling others and um you know we, we've talked about with several of the guests and throughout the book and, and reflecting on these chapters these instances of the the outsiders getting it and the insiders not right so yeah as you mentioned, the the wise ones with the the kings from the east who come and kneel before jesus when herod doesn't and it's the the temple guards that um that that, that preach empty tomb 
and it's the women who uh, evangelize resurrection. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it, it, you know, it's very, it's a woven thread throughout the whole text. And so it, it makes, um, it's very satisfying literarily for it to end tying that thread or telling us to continue to weave that thread. Actually, this is what I should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And one of the things that I, the reason I love Easter so much, right, is because Christmas, the beginning of this story is meaningless without the resurrection. Jesus would just be another prophet and we don't celebrate the prophet's birthdays ever. So the only reason that Christmas is important is because of this ongoing truth of the resurrection and the hope that we have in that. And so that's what gives the significance to today, right? When they're watching this um, Christmas Eve and Christmas day. Um, So I I like that it kind of, the way he tied the Gentiles back in and kind of calling you back to mind of those who first came at the beginning of Christ's life um, uh-huh. and the ongoingness of that message. Yeah, it ties together so nicely. And, and I personally point. love like the women as the evangelists. <laughs> as the, they're the first ones to see the empty tomb. They're the first ones to see the risen Christ. And they are the first ones to evangelize that news. Um, so there's a lot, a lot given to the women. And I think it, it all, that also pulls us back to the story of, I mean, it's Christmas, right? So <laughs> the story of Christmas where we see Mary and Joseph going, you know, to have this baby. And we don't hear much from Joseph mm-hmm. ever, nope. right? He's, he's like the silent partner in it. It right. is it's Mary. It's Mary who answers God's call. It's Mary who shoulders a lot of the burden of, um, you know, being an unwed mother who's pregnant, being giving birth uh, in a foreign place, having, you know, having to, to hope that people will take her seriously and know what's going on. So again, it's a woman. It's a woman who is modeling the best way to be a faithful disciple to Christ and, and good to and um, listen to God. So very strong on the women theology in that one. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, thank you so much, uh, Reverend Natasha. We greatly appreciate you offering your insights today on uh, the last chapter of Matthew's Gospel and Christmas Eve as well. Uh, As we celebrate the incarnation of God, uh, we will also remember the life and death and resurrection um, as well. Um, Thank you for that. And we really appreciate everyone that's tuned in uh, to this read-along series. Thank you so much. I hope you... uh, uh, gained not only from the videos, but also just the discipline of reading the, the reading scripture every single day. Keep going. Uh, pick a book of the Bible and read a chapter a day. Um, it'll do your soul good. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, also, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You've had 28 chances. Do it now. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Hit the thumb. Greatly appreciate that. You can go to pats-dublin.org slash give, make a contribution today to support all the ministries of St. Patrick's, including this YouTube channel. Greatly appreciate that as well. Keep reading the Bible, y'all. And remember, no matter what, God loves you more than you can possibly imagine.